For importers, manufacturers, and distributors, they already combine all the food waste into one number, like their disposal cost in their financial statements. And for retailers, well, they are throwing away the fresh produce done, sold fresh produce, just because they are past their arbitrary best before date. Next. Now, to put it into a different perspective, we are actually throwing away $30,000 every second. That's equivalent to one Mercedes-Benz car or 35 exploding Samsung Note 7. <laughs> well, we have to be careful with that. And 20,000 best bottles every second. That's a fact that I'm still having a hard time swallowing. Next slide. Now, to understand this problem even further, uh, my team went to this importer of bananas in Germany, and please don't focus on the people in front, but look at the crates on the back of this picture. They contain 27 tons of banana that is being thrown away every week. You may ask why. Next slide. It's because the bananas are actually guilty of being yellow during shipping. And did you know that in the EU, it's actually illegal to import yellow bananas? Wow, why? I mean, <laughs> so when they received this, uh, this box containing the yellow plus the green ones, uh, it's, it's hard for the importers to sort them out, you know, they are importing lots and lots more. So they just throw it all together and consider it as waste. Next slide. Now, uh, I know the law, in, according to E-Regulation number 1333 of 2011, actually for the imported bananas that will be sold as fresh produce, you are not allowed to have them yellow because uh, it should be green and unripened only. So if it turns yellow, it's completely waste already. And there's other in interesting facts such as uh, it should be free from malformation or abnormal curvature of the fingers and practically free from bruises. I mean, if the bananas are humans flying in EU, they will be stopping the immigration because they're guilty of being all about that base bothered base and no travel. <laughs> but you know, um, my mama, she told me don't worry about your size. But if you're a banana, every inch of you will be measured from the bottom to the top because of the sizing limits. You cannot be uh, smaller than 14 centimeters. I mean, how absurd is that? Well, on the other side, uh, 800 million people are going hungry every day, trying to make both ends meet. I mean, how can we let this happen? So, just a quick uh, question for the audience. Who here wants to have free food? Just please raise your hands. Yeah, uh, free and fast food, right? So, but who here wants to eat free fast food left over from their friends? It's your friends, come on, don't be shy. There, let me see, still see a handful, right? And, but how about, uh, who here wants to eat free fast food left over from the garbage bin? You know, if I will be talking with the urban poor in the Philippines, they will still raise their hands. Next slide. They call it pagpak, uh, which literally translates to, to dust off. And, after the working hours of the fast food chains, the poor people actually open up their garbage bin and try to dig up the leftovers, such as chicken meat, and try to bring it back home. And then they will try to boil it or refry it and serve it for their family as their meal. And some, they even open up a whole new economy by trying to resell Pagpa to their neighbors and try to put up mini stands and sell and come up with their new recipes and try to sell them to, to their neighbors. I mean, uh, this for the fast food chains, they already considered it as garbage. But for the poor people, they think waste and see it as an opportunity. I mean, I do not uh, recommend this because there's a lot of health risks involved. But maybe we can take an inspiration from that and maybe ask ourselves again, what if 
uh, there's a we can achieve a world without food waste and convert the food that we are actually wasting on the other side, overproduction or surplus, or it's just beauty requirements, and maybe try to use it to feed to more people. Well, that's why we are here to the rescue with our um, with our bed sheet Superman capes, trying to save food from being wasted. That's why we created FOPO, where we aim to be a global food company that seeks to re-engineer the food by leveraging the inefficiencies of the current food chain. We learn, uh, well, what we want to do is to change this old linear and wasteful approach into the FOPO approach, which is more circular, and it, it will be uh, where we utilize the, the waste and convert it to something else. We learned that if we collect all these bananas before they expire, dry them, and turn them into powder, we can extend the shelf life from two weeks to two years, while saving nutrition by up to 90%. Then, the powder can then be easy to use and easy to deliver. Next. Actually, the key to extending the shelf life is to dry them. Did you know that uh, for the fruits, uh, it contains a high amount of water that is still uh, perfect for bacteria and molds to grow. And the goal for the drying process is actually to lower the water content up to such a level that it will be impossible for bacteria and molds to grow and multiply. And for us, what we do is we use spray drying or hot air to convert the water, to evaporate water from the fruit, or freeze drying wherein we freeze the fruits and then under low pressure we uh, undergo the, the ice into gas through the process called sublimation. And in that way, by converting this banana into the powder, we will make it, uh, we will extend its shelf life from two weeks to two years. So we, we joined this competition, the Thought for Food Challenge, wherein uh, the question is how to solve, how to feed 9 billion people by 2050. And we won, we joined a, lot of, a couple of other competitions. Then after some string of success, we opened up our Kickstarter campaign. And then, boom, there's uh, an influx of requests from international media. And our simple solution actually got the attention of a lot of people sharing our story. This shows and it validates that our idea is actually interesting for people and they want to be involved in it. And, but the main question for them is actually how do you use the powders? So for us, uh, we gave samples to the experts of the food service industry. We gave it to bakeries, salads, salad stores, hotels, restaurants, and bars. And they came up with ingenious solutions, such as this chef from a five-star hotel who created uh, this delicious pralines and Luxembourg tea out of cocoa uh, using the pineapple and mango powder. And some also created smoothies and even cocktails uh, out of our powders. Interesting, delicious, huh? And as for the food ingredients uh, application, companies are also interested to use it as an ingredient for healthy nutrition bars, flavoring for steered yogurts, special flavoring for cheese breads or smoothies, and also to resell it to end consumers as an all-purpose product. I mean, why not? But what makes me more interested as a use case is that um, it can also help feed more people who are in need. That's why my team flew back to the Philippines and did this FOMO feeding day where we fed 450 children from preschools to grade schools and even to rescue centers. Wherein, and as you can see, they loved it. Um, yeah, I mean, this is just one step towards uh, a world free of backpack and maybe a uh, more way of utilizing food waste and still feeding more people with nutritious food. And as for FOCO, our creativity never stops. 
uh, and food powder is just the start. We will still create energy bars for people on the go and also more ideal for humanitarian aid. Uh, dried snack to replace um, the unhealthy crisps and, and, and nutrition powder for 3D food printing, which is also ideal for elderly people who cannot cook in their homes and they just need a specialized nutrition. When it comes to waste, uh, we are always taught about doing the three R's, which is reduce, reuse, and recycle. But probably it's about time to add another fourth R, which is to rethink. Maybe we have to just rethink about food waste. Maybe, and for me personally, I think we do not have a problem of food waste, but a problem of creativity. We become so obsessed with the laws and norms that we fail to realize that the answers are already there. We just have to connect the dots. Waste is not waste until we find a new way of using it. And for us, we utilize an existing technology and just use another source. And for solving big global issues such as food waste, Maybe we just need a new mindset, dust off our brain cells from time to time, and start believing that the answer is actually there into achieving a world without food waste. Thank you.